Hey guys, so I sold my 16 inch MacBook Pro in Jan this year and that machine was a beast. It was the top of the line at that moment. Although the specs weren't specced out, but still it was the best MacBook you could buy. And I sold that and bought a MacBook Air M1. And again, this is January. And this is my beautiful MacBook Air M1. And now it's been 10 months. So this video is about how that experience has been, how this MacBook M1 performs overall using it with regular daily use and heavy use. And I'm talking video editing, I'm talking about photography editing, I'm even gonna touch on coding, although I'm not a coder. And I'm gonna tell you how good it is. This one has eight GB RAM in it, and is that good enough or not? I'll also explain that as well. And also, I'm gonna tell you if I have any complaints on it or not. So let's go discuss it. The first thing I should mention is the specs of my particular machine. This is a MacBook Air M1 with 8 GB of RAM and 512 GB of SSD storage. Now I chose the 8 GB RAM because I knew it wasn't that much of a bump up if I took the 16 GB as much as it would have been if this was a PC. In PC and other laptops it matters. In Macs, especially the M1 Apple Silicon series, the RAM doesn't matter that much. It does, before you go crazy in the comments, it does, but not as much as with other stuff. And for me, with my budget, I was more comfortable raising the SSD because I didn't want to put in an external. Let me quickly remind you of the differences between Apple MacBook Air M1 and a MacBook Pro M1 13 inch. They both came out together. The real basic difference was that the MacBook Pro had a touch bar and the Air didn't. The MacBook Pro M1 also has a fan for better thermals and the Air doesn't. Also, the MacBook Pro has a slightly bigger battery which gives it slightly more battery time and the speakers are supposed to be slightly better and it has 100 nits more of brightness than the MacBook Air. These are the basic differences and the real difference if you ask me is basically that fan because that could give an extra boost to performance. The rest is just, it could matter to some people but for me it really didn't matter. As for use, my biggest use has been for video editing which is probably one of the most demanding processes you could use a computer for. So I'll tell you how that went and how it goes. Also, I do some photo editing on this. I do regular stuff like streaming, browsing, and we'll discuss all of that. Okay, so let me talk about the performance now. Now, when I video edit, which is, again, I'm gonna repeat, one of the most demanding things you could do on a laptop, I am very happy with this performance. Now, my disclaimer here is that I usually shoot and edit in 1080p, which is just HD, and I don't use 4K that much, although I have tested that as well, and I'll just tell you. But for 1080p, this thing is a beast. It gives me no trouble. I can use plenty of layers and timelines. It's not an issue. I can add effects. Yes, the more animation effects you do, it does add to the processing um, pile up, you could say. And if you really push it, then this will throttle a little. And if it throttles, it throttles around 15 to 20% performance drop. That's it, which is still quite amazing for a MacBook Air. And this is practically a MacBook Pro. It has the same processor, same GPU, same so many things, except for that fan. I told you that fan is important. But having said that, I don't regret not getting that fan because this hasn't really throttled that much. And I live in a very warm country. In the summers, it touches 44, 43 degrees centigrade. So this was a really good test for the MacBook Air M1. And it gave me very little trouble. Yeah, if I don't have the fan on or the AC on and I'm in that type of heat, this will throttle a little, no doubt about it. But overall, you sit in a place which is kind of cool for yourself and this doesn't give me much trouble, which is pretty awesome. I'm super happy with it in video editing. If you edit in 4K, yeah, that is slightly more demanding and you will be a little more restricted on the amount of layers and animation stuff you do before it throttles, but it can handle 4K pretty well as well. You can pile up whatever you want in it and you can live with that 15% or 20% throttle. To be honest, it's not such a big deal. I think where this performs the worst is when you are rendering out from a video editing software when you're rendering your video and you open other stuff as well like Photoshop, like Safari perhaps and a bunch of tabs and you're doing some stuff. That rendering process is probably the most uh, processor intensive. So that's when you can feel slight lag and you have to kind of be patient with it. But honestly, these are things that you're not doing all the time and you're just gonna render once in a few hours when you want the video out and stuff. So I would say this is a real good machine for video editing, I'm really happy with it. This has only eight GB of RAM. It's mind blowing and mind boggling how this thing can keep up with so much work, so much processor intensive tasks 
but it does and it's awesome. So video editing is really not an issue unless you're going for 8K stuff, then I'm not gonna recommend this. But even for 4K stuff, if you are doing YouTube work or basic stuff, it's not a problem at all. If you work for a production house and you have to churn out a lot of high quality, high data stuff, then yeah, maybe this is not the laptop for you. You should go for the Pro or the actually M1 Pro and M1 Max, which was just released recently. Those are way better, but those are much more expensive than this. So if for video editing, I love this machine and all my entire channel runs on the editing that comes out of this. So two thumbs up. Guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, think about hitting a like and subscribing. And you can also join my Facebook group where you can interact with me. The link is in the description. As for photo editing, if I use this for video editing and I'm happy, you can guess how it does for photos as well. I shoot raw in my camera all the time basically, and I use Lightroom and Photoshop, and this thing works really well. If you pile it up with like uh, 500 images of raw, yeah, then it might take a little more processing power, it might lag a little bit, it will throttle a bit, but honestly, in basic stuff or even normal medium stuff, it's no issue. When you go really high intensive stuff, it works pretty well too, but the more you throw at it, it will slightly give you some throttling to 15, 20%. And I'm still happy with it. Nowhere do I feel like, oh God, this thing is difficult to work with. Not at all. I'm trying to tell you the worst case scenarios that when you really pile stuff up, when you really push the machine, that's when it does throttle a bit, it does lag because it'd be a lie if I told you that it didn't. After all, it is without a fan and there's only so much you could throw at any machine at a time. And as for other normal stuff like browsing, streaming, even audio editing, which is not normal actually, because that's RAM intensive. But all the other stuff I do, this thing works like a breeze and it's just performs so well. I actually love it. So I'm really happy with it. And the battery, let's talk about the battery. The battery is the best thing about this machine. Actually, after the processor being Apple Silicon working so well, the battery is insane. This thing, when you're using it for normal stuff, like if I charge this 100% and then I watch a YouTube video for like 45 minutes, sometimes I look at the battery, it's like 98%, 2%, 3% will drop. It's mind blowing. And that happened today, I was just watching something and I had just used it for half an hour and it was 99%. But of course it doesn't maintain that same ratio. Otherwise this would last like what, 30 hours, which it doesn't. This lasts around 12 hours, 14 hours. If you're just streaming, maybe a little bit more. So the battery is insane, I love it. And the best part is when you're working on it on battery alone, not powered up, even if you're video editing and doing CPU intensive tasks, it will still run at full optimum and maximum processing power. So the battery, unlike other PCs and laptops, Windows and stuff, it doesn't make a difference to the performance, which is just amazing and I love Apple for doing that. So the battery is just superb. It still gives me so much time. When I'm doing really heavy work and I'm just on battery, yeah, it'll give me five, six hours. Uh, if I'm doing video editing, that's pretty much how it'll be. It won't be above that probably. And if I'm doing just streaming and stuff, 12, 13, 14 hours, like I said, if it's really light, or you have the power, um, sorry, if you have the screen brightness low, it'll give you more. So this thing is a beast and it's killing me softly just with its performance love, if that makes any sense. As for coders, if you're a programmer or a coder, the first thing you should know is that I'm not, and I don't know too much about it, but I'm part of a lot of Facebook groups that discuss the M1 a lot, and a lot of coders ask, is this good for me or not? Over the past 10 months, I've seen loads of posts, and often a lot of coders respond, and I read those posts, and they usually say that this is really good for programming and coding, it's not much of a problem. They always say that make sure your software that you use is compatible with the Apple Silicon. That's the first thing, all the plugins or whatever you use. And the second thing they say is 16 GB RAM does come into use when it's coding and programming. So you might wanna go with the 16 GB RAM. Having said that, let's talk about the RAM a little. I am so happy with 8 GB RAM. I think it is perfect. And with an Apple Silicon, I didn't bother to go to the 16 GB, although I video edit and do stuff, because I had heard when I bought it that I had seen tests and I saw that the 16 GB wasn't making such a big difference. And honestly, when this thing runs out of RAM, you, don't, you can't tell because it uses the fast SSD as a makeshift RAM. 
And some people have a problem with that, I don't at all. And it just doesn't let you know or let you feel like there's some RAM shortage. So that's why I chose an SSD to be larger than the RAM. But an 8 GB RAM will go a long way. It's not gonna give you much trouble. If you're a coder or programmer, it might be better for you. Yes, you can ask your friends who are also coders that did that actually make a difference or not. So you can choose accordingly. But honestly, I'm a big promoter of just the 8 GB RAM when you're going for the MacBook Air M1. Yeah, if I buy a M1 Pro or M1 Max, that the basic model is 16 GB anyways, and I would have chosen 16 GB in that no matter what, because that's a computer I would keep for the next four or five years, and the more RAM, no matter what I'm saying, I do believe in it, but the more RAM will give you a slight edge no matter what, and I have been saying that throughout the video as well, that there will be a difference, it's just not enough for me to justify going for that. That's what I meant, so I hope that's clear. But that's pretty much it. If I am to think of a complaint about this, um, Well, my silence should answer your question there. My major complaint could be that the screen is small, but then again, this is a 13 inch. You know it's small when you're buying it. And my, I, I what other complaint do I have about this? This is a freaking awesome computer and I love it. And I love the weight, I love the form factor. I don't mind the screen at all. The speakers are great. The battery is insane, I, just amazing. The processing power, as you know, this is the Pro, it's same thing, just without the fan. Yeah, maybe the not having a fan is a complaint, but it's not because you have to buy the Pro if you want a fan. You, that's just not a valid complaint. So darn, this thing is awesome. And if you're thinking about saving money and getting a MacBook Air M1 these days, I would say just go for it. If you're getting a used one at good price, go for it. Yeah, the M1 Pro and M1 Max are here. And personally, if I was to buy an M1 right now, I would probably buy the 14 inch, no doubt. And I might buy the base model. I just might do that, uh, sell this and do that because I do YouTube. I like new gear and new tech. So I would think that. But honestly, if you're looking for an M1 Air, I would say go for it and you will not be disappointed. I hope you get a good deal. So that's my video for today. I hope it was useful. I hope you liked it. Definitely hit a like and subscribe if you did. And till our next video, take care. Bye.